Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Administrator, as you know, I'm deeply troubled by the NASA budget in which science is cut all by $162 million and planetary science by an astounding $300 million, resulting in the administration's short-sighted proposal to walk away from the ExoMars program with ESA. It would have put a, an orbiter around Mars in 2016 and a lander on the surface two years later to begin the process of catching samples for a later return to Earth. I don't need to tell you that a Mars sample return is the top of the scientist list and that the 2018 mission is ranked at the top of the current planetary decadal. And I also don't need to remind you that the number two mission is a Europa orbiter that will give us insight into one of the solar system's most mysterious bodies. And if there's any question about the priorities of this committee, uh, as uh, the language uh, Mr. Culverson proposed last year makes clear, uh, those uh, planetary uh, decadal priorities are our priorities as well. And no element to the American space program has generated more public excitement and interest over the past decade than our robotic exploration of the red planet. In the days following Spirit's landing in January of 2004, NASA web servers crashed under an assault from literally millions of people worldwide who wanted to see the latest pictures from the Martian surface. These proposed cuts not only threaten the most successful exploration program in NASA history, they also imperil what is certainly the world's most specialized workforce, the engineers and scientists at JPL who specialize in entry, descent, and landing on other planets. I don't need to tell you how difficult it is to do this kind of work. There have been more failures than successes at landing vehicles on Mars, and ours is the only country to have yet succeeded. But this is a workforce and a capability that cannot survive long periods of inactivity. If we adopt your reconfigured Mars program, a drastic scaling back of our capacity to do this kind of edge of the envelope science will be the inevitable consequence. I think cannibalizing the Mars program, which gets closer to unlocking the secrets of Mars past with each mission and discovery, is a major step backwards for NASA and the nation. While human spaceflight has been stuck in low Earth orbit for three decades and now is reliant on the Russians, and with James Webb still years away from launch, the Mars program is the key driver of public support for the space program. In short, I think the budget proposal is a disaster for our leadership in space. Uh, and I want to thank the chairman uh, uh, sincerely for calling a timeout to give us a chance to uh, fully explore this proposal and I hope come up with something much better. Um, I am perplexed at uh, the responses that you gave to the chairman's questions at the outset of this hearing when he asked you uh, why the disproportionate uh, and devastating cuts to planetary science and in particular Mars program. And your response was, uh, uh, I quote, the Mars program was in the best shape. Uh, I don't understand that answer. That's an answer that says um, in order to uh, make budget cuts, we savage the most successful program we have. Um, I don't think you can come here and tout MSL because MSL, this, community, this committee is about the future. Uh, it's about what we are going to do in the future. Uh, and to rely on MSL is to rely on our past. Uh, that was a program that was developed largely under the Bush administration. Uh, and for this administration uh, at NASA to, uh, to say that this is proof of our, our ongoing commitment to Mars uh, just falls desperately short to me. Because if you were before this committee while MSL was still on the drawing board, you'd be coming before us to tell us to pull the plug on MSL. Uh, and I think that is a, just a tragic uh, a place to be. Um, we now have a decadal survey uh, top priority that will not be undertaken if your proposal is accepted, will not be taken, uh, taken by the United States. It will be taken by uh, the Europeans now in partnership with the Russians. Uh, and I think it is a sad state of affairs uh, when uh, we're already reliant on the Russians to get a lift to the space station, we're also going to tell uh, the Europeans they can't count on us anymore. They need to count on the Russians for the top priority of our own scientists. I also don't understand the response you gave to the chairman about the decadal when he asked you, isn't this inconsistent with the decadal priorities? Uh, and your answer was something to the effect of, no, um, canceling the exoplanet, uh, uh, exomars missions canceling the, 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 the top priority of the Takeda, which is to catch those samples this decade, is somehow advancing the decadal priorities. Uh, that is a, a very Orwellian answer in my view that says that the way to go forward is to go backward. The way to go up is to go down. Uh, and just by saying so doesn't make it so. Uh, 
Uh, if we walk away from the decadal, we are walking away from the decadal. And no amount of, of spin or rhetoric can change that fact. Uh, what I would like to try to understand is when you came before our committee last year, when you met individually with members of this committee, and you said that we could, we could do a flagship mission to Mars, that we had the budget to do a flagship mission to Mars, uh, and we agreed with you on doing a flagship, even though it meant condensing uh, some of what had been planned. Uh, when did you make the decision during the last 12 months that that was no longer the case? Uh, was that a decision you made, or was that a decision OMB made? And if it was a decision that OMB made, why is OMB deciding what the planetary decadal priorities ought to be? I understand they can give you a top line, but the, the thing I don't understand is the top line uh, for the NASA budget is essentially flat from the year before. Uh, and I don't think you or, or we on this committee expect it to be any different. None of us thought that the NASA budget would be dramatically improved. So there's no surprise in going from last year to this year in terms of what the top line is. Um, and what I would like to know is, did this proposal to uh, abandon the come uh, from you, or was that proposed by OMB? Congressman, the decision came from me. Well, the and decision, the the, I'm not asking where the decision came from. You asked me where the decision came well, from. I told I'm you asking came from where me. the proposal came from. Because the I decision came from me. I understand the decision came from you. Where did the proposal come from? Did, did you propose this, or did OMB propose this? I asked the question because I, I, I spend time with, uh, with my counterpart in the European Space Agency, Mr. Jean-Jacques Dardan, who has the responsibility for managing the 19 nations that are a part of ESA. And as we talked from, from 2009, when I first my, signed my first letter of intent with him, to continue to talk uh, about the ExoMars mission. And I think if you look at documentation, if you talk to him, we never committed to the ExoMars mission. We always had difficulty trying Mr. to Mr. determine Mr. that we would have the question, fund. Which is, did the proposal come from you or did it come from Owen? The question that led to my decision came from me. I asked, how are we going to do a, a you know, how are we going to do a Mars sample return based on the budget that we have currently? And this was not this budget. This was the budget in place for 2012, uh, even the budget for 2011. What, what, what is the level of detail in the 2018 mission? And at that time, when I was told, well, we are developing the 2018 mission with ESA, uh, you know, I said, well, okay, what about the sample return? Well, that will come on subsequent missions. Um, that is not something that I was... Administrator, the sample return was always going to come on subsequent missions. Yeah, but that's not no the impression was, no that people had. No one was ever had. proposing that we were going to uh, go and catch the samples and bring them back on the same mission. That was always the proposal. Well, the only person who didn't understand but, that but was my me. My question, Mr. Administrator, I still haven't got an answer to, which is, where did the proposal to cancel the flagship missions come from? Did that come from you, or did it come from OMB? The proposal came from coordinated efforts between my science uh, experts, the people in, in NASA, our talks with the White House, with OMB and OSTP, and our talks with our international and, and, partners. And when did this happen? This happened over the last 12 months. It started happening actually uh, as early as 2009 when I signed the letter of intent. Th then when you came in here last year and you told us we had the resources to do the flight. At flag the time, I thought we had the resources to do but that now you're because the budget was back $2 billion dollars higher than it is right but now. But now you're telling me back in 2009 you decided you didn't have the resources? I, I did not decide I didn't have the resources. Then I began to question whether we had the resources then because, as I said, you and others well, fully understood that, that ExoMars was not, a ca was not a sample return. I was not that smart. I thought ExoMars was a you, sample you return because that's what the decadal survey you, you understood from us last year that our priority was to do the top of the decadal survey. Yes, sir. Um, and as the NASA budget hasn't changed, I can only conclude that, uh, that you and OMB and the White House had already made the decision you were going to cancel the flagship mission and just didn't want to tell us. Yes, or, uh, apropos of the chairman's question about why you want to remove the language limit, limiting the cost overruns on web, that it's now your, your view that those costs are going to continue to increase, uh, and therefore you need to come in and cannibalize the successful Mars program. Yeah. Because something changed over the last 12 months. A number right? of things changed over the last, last 12 months, oh, and, and, and my, my, my growth into this job and my understanding of the complexity of the missions we were doing and, and our ability to, to mount a sample return mission changed. My understanding of that changed. So and the, I could not... So it's, I could not, not a change, it's not a change in, in web from last year. 
Let yes, it is. Sure that there is a, there is a change in Webb from last year. Last year, Webb was was gone, and uh, and and I felt that the James Webb Space Telescope was so critical to this nation and the international science community, we could not make that short-sighted decision. And so I fought to get funding for the James Webb Space Telescope. As I told the chairman, what, what I would have liked to have done was asked for enough money to launch James Webb in 2014. That would have been irresponsible because that would have decimated the science budget. When you came, we have a, when you we came, have a when program you right this, now. When you came to this committee to argue for Webb, yes, sir. and the chairman raised the concern about Webb, yes. you didn't tell the chairman or any of us that you want to do Webb, but by the way, we're not going to be able to do Mars if we do this. I didn't know that at the time. And when did you have this epiphany that 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 Congressman, this, this, e this epiphany is you, it wasn't an epiphany. It was a successive understanding of our posture fiscally and a successive understanding on my part of our technical capability that told me that I could not I could, and as I told Jean Jacques Dadan, I cannot in good conscience allow them to be to continue to think that the United States is going to be there for them on a sample return mission in 2028 that we cannot support, we cannot afford. Right. And so I said, we need to step back. And as, as I told them, this all, most of this happened before Christmas because we had, we had people in Paris, France, in negotiations with Roscosmos and the European Space Agency. And I finally decided, you know, I called Jean-Jacques and I said, I can't in good conscience allow our folk to continue to sit there discussing something that we know we will not be able to support. Well, and, and so, and you know, if, if Mr. we Spender, want to be able to launch in the 2018-2020 window, and that's what John, Dr. John Grunsfeld is trying to do now, to find a series of missions that are, that are decreased in scope but accomplish the basic objectives of setting up a subsequent Mars sample return mission. And I think we will do that. And, and Mr. Administrator, I can't in good conscience uh, support a budget that says that uh, – that America's days of leadership in uh, space science are limited, that Europe, you can't count on us, uh, that uh, China is ascendant uh, in its Mars program, uh, that you've got to go to Russia and later China, uh, that we're going to walk away from our own decadal priority, our own uh, top priority of our science community, that when we're this tantalizingly close to finding the building blocks of life on another planet, that we're going to walk away and that we're going to rest on the laurels of the administrations and the generations that went before. Uh, I can't in good conscience support that kind of proposal. And I yield back. Hey, Congressman, as I, as I mentioned to you once before, and I, I, I would hope that you would uh, put MSL in the past when you, when you, when you communicate with people at, James, at, at the Jet Propulsion Labs. We have the hardest part of that mission coming. And for them to believe that their representative feels that that's something in the past the most no, difficult I, part I, of that I, mission. I, I don't think the mission is in the past. And I, no one has greater respect for the work that those brilliant people are doing than I do. But what I, what I resent is coming in here uh, and using MSL as a justification to cancel the future of the Mars program and the flagship missions. And I can tell you, Mr. Administrator, there is no one at JPL working on MSL or any other program that will accept the argument that because they are working so hard and have had such great success with MSL thus far that we should cancel our future flagships. And, Congressman, we are not, we have not given up on flagships. We have not given up on future flagships. What I have uh, Dr. Grunsfeld doing is trying to come up with a plan that will allow us to strategically approach the next flagship mission to Mars that will enable us to do a, a sample return mission. That is still a primary objective of our Mars exploration program. We're trying to accomplish the science objectives of the joint ESA-NASA collaboration that was still go that was going on on ExoMars, and we intend to, to facilitate their success to the greatest amount we can, to also accomplish the priorities of the, of the planetary decadal, which said, a Mars sample return mission is our number one objective. They did not say ExoMars. They said ExoMars is an example of a mission that will facilitate that success. There are more ways to do that than, than participating in ExoMars. We will cooperate with the Europeans and maybe the Russians, but it will be an international effort that brings us a, a sample return mission, and it will happen.
in the foreseeable future. We are not giving up on Mars. We are not decimating the Mars program. We have what I think is a, it was a very ambitious Mars program. We have not given up on Europa. Uh, you know, we have three studies underway right now just looking at how we can attack the planet Europa, uh, the, the moon. And, and it's, we have got to figure out how we prioritize our science budget so that we can accomplish as many of those goals as possible. We can't do them all. We cannot do them all. So we are trying to prioritize such that we will, we will achieve the objective. The, the last thing I'm, I'm going to say, and I appreciate the indulgence of the chairman because I know I've taken more than my time. Those are all fine words, but they don't make it so. And defunding Europa doesn't mean that you're pushing forward with Europa. Canceling the flagships doesn't mean you're pushing forward with an aggressive Mars program. It's exactly the opposite. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wish that uh, we could all get by on good words, but what matters is the deeds, and the deeds right now are canceling the flagship missions, they're canceling Europa, they're ceding uh, to Russia the role of, uh, with ESA, meeting the number one priority of our scientists and the decadal survey. And that is a very sad proposal and one that I can't accept and I yield back. Yes, and Congressman, I promise we will discuss the status of the Mars program after we land on Mars in August. And, uh, and I think you will see the interest in Mars explode. Uh, so I, I think we have a, we don't have the program in place that I would like to have because I don't have uh, endless money, but we have a program in, in place that I think will bring great results. And, and we have not given up our leadership uh, on exploration of Mars, whether human or robotic. So I, I think we respectfully disagree on the status of the program right now. But I, I think we have the same objective in mind, and we'll get there.